Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at some calculus with parametric curves. So first of all recall that we looked at some parametric curves earlier in the course and the parametric plane curve in the xy plane is uh, given where x and y are functions of a third variable called the parameter. Usually we use the letter t but it could be any letter besides x and y. And that will give us a curve that's in a plane. If we give x, y, and z as functions of a single parameter t, then we get a parametric space curve. That is a curve in 3D space. So notice in either case, when we have a one parameter situation, then that gives us a curve. Or if you want to think of it, maybe a path. And oftentimes we think of t as being time at different times we're at different locations along that curve uh, the slope remember of a of a curve or the slope of the tangent line to the curve at a single point is given by m you know, equals dy over dx the derivative y with respect to x well we can compute that in terms of the parameter t by saying that dy is dy over dt and dx is dx over dt and so this is equivalent to the ratio of these two uh, derivatives with respect to t so the slope is dy over dt over dx over dt it's like the dt's sort of cancel out here not exactly what's going on but more or less that's that's right um then we have a net signed area between a parametric curve and the x-axis. And there's a very straightforward uh, substitution there as well. Uh, if we have y as a function of x, we integrate with respect to x from x1 to x2. If these are all given in terms of the parameters, then the y of x is now becomes a y of t, y of x of t. So it's just a y as a function of t. And then we give uh, the dx becomes x prime of t dt. And we just go from a t1 to t2. If we want to find the arc length of a parametric curve, we use our arc length parameter s is, uh, is just the integral of that arc length differential ds. Well, the ds is x prime of t square plus y prime of t square and then square root times dt. So we just integrate that from t1 to t2. So let's look at an example of each of these things. So here we want to graph a parametric curve and locate the point on it when t equals 3. Our parametric equations are x equals 1 tenth t square and y equals 2 plus sine of pi t. And we're going to let t go from 0 to 6 inclusive. So it's going to have endpoints when t is 0 and t is 6. Okay, this is something that we had looked at earlier. It's useful to do some of this by hand by just plugging in certain t values. Make yourself a table of x and y's from the various t's. Plot the points, connect the dots, and get a graph. Of course, after you've done a few of those by hand, then it's useful to use some sort of graphing technology, whether that's your graphing calculator or some computer program. We'll use that to get our graphs. So regardless, see if you can come up with a graph of this one on your own. Press pause. Come back when you're ready. Okay, at this point you should have done that. And we see that we get this graph here. Notice a couple of things about it. As t increases from 0 to 6, this sine of pi t is uh, periodic. In, in fact, it's bouncing up and down between negative 1 and 1. If we add 2 to that, that's, that means that y is bouncing up and down between 1 and 3. So you can see it goes down as far as 1 and up as far as 3. So the y values are, go between 1 and 3. The x values, <clears throat> on the other hand, are definitely not periodic. As t increases, x increases. In fact, it increases faster and faster as we go. And so what we see here is this thing is sort of bouncing up and down with a wave kind of thing going, but the wave is getting stretched further and further out horizontally, uh, but not vertically, as we go bigger and bigger in t's. If you look at t equals 0, x is 0, and let's see, sine of 0, 0, so this is y is 2. So 0, 2 is the first endpoint right there where t is 0. And if t is 6, it should be at this endpoint. Let's check that. 
Uh, 6 squared is 36 divided by 10 is 3.6 for the X, which you can see right here on that. Maybe you can see that minor grid line there, but there it is. And then the Y is, um, let's see, sine of 6 pi is 0, so Y is 2. So it's just 3.6 comma 2 for X, Y, and T is 6. That's the endpoint right there. I ask you to find specifically the point where T equals 3. You can see it located here at point A. And we can find that by plugging in again. 3 squared is 9 divided by 10 is 0.9. So it's 0.9 for x here above that. And from the looks of it, y should be 2. <clears throat> Let's verify that. 3 times pi, 3 pi. Sine of that is 0 plus 2 is 2. So yes, the x is 0.9, the y is 2 when t equals 3. Now let's see if we can find the tangent line to the curve at that point. See if you can do it on your own. Come back when you think you have it. Press pause now. Well, the first thing we want to do is find the derivatives of y and x in terms of uh, t, in other words, derivatives with respect to t. So we take the derivative of x with respect to t, that's x prime of t, or dx over dt, and uh, this is just a power function, so we know how to do that. 2 times 1 tenth is 1 fifth. The power goes down once, so that's just 1 fifth t. And dy over dt, or y prime of t, is take the derivative of this with respect to t. Well, the derivative of 2 is 0. The derivative of sine of pi t is cosine of pi t times the derivative of pi t, which is pi. So we use the little chain rule there. The slope as a function of t at any t value here would be dy over dt over dx over dt. So it's just uh, this formula here, pi times cosine of pi t over 1 fifth t. Now be sure that you have y on top, x on the bottom for those derivatives, just like we always do for the slope. Don't get it upside down. Here I have um, fractions inside of fractions, so I multiply top and bottom of the fraction. Uh, by 5, multiply the numerator and denominator by 5, that leaves a 5 on the top, gets rid of that 1 fifth on the bottom. And so there's sort of a simplified version of the slope, 5 pi times cosine of pi t over t. That's the slope at any particular t value. So specifically, we know that t is 3 at our point right here. So we plug in 3 for t and see if we can work this out a little bit to simplify. Cosine of 3t is negative 1. So this is negative 5 pi over 3 for the slope there. Now we also know from our last screen that, that uh, xy has coordinates uh, 0.9 and 2 for x and y respectively when t is 3. So we know the x and y coordinates of the point and the slope. It's real easy to write down the tangent line then, uh, the equation there. y equals the slope, negative 5 pi over 3, times parentheses x minus the x coordinate 0.9, close parentheses, plus the y coordinate 2. That's the point slope version of the line. And that's probably the best way to leave it for a tangent line. We could put it in slope intercept form, slope y intercept form, that is, or slope x intercept form, or some other, centered at some other point. But this one makes the most sense in this particular case because when you're looking at a tangent line, this shows the point of tangency, 0.92, right there, is on both the graph of the tangent line, and of course we knew it was on the original graph as well. And um, it's just it just shows this is a little bit better way of doing this and of seeing that point of tangency and it's also of course the tangent line is an approximation of the curve when the uh, well the t is close to three when you're close to this point here on the graph. All right, how about the next thing? What about find the area between this curve and the x-axis? Now one way to do this would be to eliminate the parameter. So here x is one tenth t squared, and on this values of t, x is positive. So we could solve this for t. Uh, let's see, multiply by 10, take the square root. t is the square root of 10x. Put that in place of the t here. Now you got y as a function of x. Do it just like you would have done in Cal 1. Just integrate that from the minimum x to the maximum x. Okay, but let's see if we can do it with just in, do it in parametric equations directly. Okay. So here's how that works out. Um, it's this area right here that we're looking at, this area between the curve and the x-axis. I graph this in uh, the program uh, GeoGebra, and it returns the area for me, at least approximately, about 6.82. Uh, 
and shades that for me. So let's look at that and let's see, get it, find it exactly. So that area is the integral from some lower t to upper t of y of t times x prime of t dt. So just plug in everything. We know our t's are going to run from 0 to 6, so that gives you our limits on our integral. We're integrating with respect to dt, with respect to t at the end. So y of t is just 2 plus sine of pi t, that goes here. x prime of t is this right here, 1 fifth t, that goes there. Now I can factor the 1 fifth all the way and bring it all the way out front of the integral, like that. And I will distribute the t, so this is 2t plus t times sine of pi t. So ultimately I'm going to be evaluating from 0 to 6 the antiderivative of this thing here. Well, I'm going to break that into two antiderivatives. The antiderivative of the 2t is easy. That's just t squared. The derivative of t squared is 2t. That's, that's not hard. This one's a little harder. Not too hard, but it is an integration by parts problem. So we, um, we, uh, let, we, we write this as the integral of u dv, and then that integral becomes u uh, of v du minus the integral of I'm sorry, let's say it again. The integral of u dv becomes uv minus the integral of v du. That's the way parts works. So we let the t be the u part and the sine of pi t dt be the dv part. The derivative of u is, uh, uh, is du, that's just dt. So du is dt. Then v, we find by doing an antiderivative, we get minus 1 over pi cosine of pi t. The antiderivative for sine of pi t is cosine of pi t, but we needed a pi there, balance with the minus, uh, 1 over pi, it's minus here. So let's just double check it by going to the backwards and derivative. Derivative of cosine of pi t is minus, cancels that minus to a plus, sine of pi t, times the derivative of the inside, which is pi, which cancels that 1 over pi, so we're back to sine of pi t. So that checks out. All right, so if you look at it, this is the integral of u and then dv. So that's uv, multiply these two together, t times this minus 1 over pi cosine of pi t, minus the integral of v du, multiply these two together. This is right here. And so then we um, work with that. So, so I just sort of pull the t inside here like that. And uh, these two minuses make a plus. Now the antiderivative here is sine of pi t times 1 over pi squared. Uh, you can check that because um, sine of pi t, the derivative is cosine of pi t times the derivative of the inside, which is pi, times the 1 over pi squared is 1 over pi. Everything is positive, and this is positive because of the two negatives. Okay, so that seems to check out. So now let's evaluate from 0 to 6. We still got our one-fifth out front, so it's one-fifth times the whole bracket here. And inside that bracket, we have parentheses minus parentheses. Inside the first parentheses is this equation, or this uh, formula, expression, with t equals 6 minus, and then this parentheses for the second one is that expression with t is 0. I'm going to start at the right side here and work back to the left. S pi times 0 is 0, sine of that's 0, so that term's 0. Uh, here we have a 0 times something, so that term is 0. 0 squared is 0. 6 pi, the sine of that is 0. So the, these last four terms all are just 0. Here we get uh, minus 6 over pi. Cosine of 6 pi is 1, so that's just minus 6 over pi. 6 squared is 36. So we get 1 fifth of 36 minus 6 over pi. It's not a bad way to leave it. But I'm going to factor the 6 out. Leaves me 6 over 5. And then I have 6 minus 1 over pi, multiply by pi over pi here. We get uh, 6 over pi minus 1 over pi is 6 pi minus 1 over pi. Multiply by this, we get 6 times parentheses, 6 pi minus 1, close parentheses, divide by 5 pi. That's the exact value, and if you run that through a calculator for an approximation, you get about 6.818, and... That does agree with this approximately 6.82 that we got over here. So everything seems to be lining up well there. Now, what if we want to find the, the length of this curve? We want to set that up as an exact value with an integral. And uh, we're going to actually probably approximate the integral this time. Okay, so let's see if we can go through with the steps there. 
this stuff at the top that our derivatives here may be useful and our limits here. So S is just the integral from lower t to upper t, dx dt squared plus dy over dt squared, square root of that, and then integrate with respect to t. So it's got dt on the outside. That's just the integral of S, or the, the integral of ds is S. Okay, <clears throat> our t is run <coughs> from 0 to 6, so we've got that. dx over dt is 1 fifth t, so we just substitute that in here. dy over dt is pi cosine of pi t here. We substitute that in. All right, well, that is a bit of a messy integral, and that's not uh, unusual. These arc length integrals and sometimes surface integrals, anything that has to do with this, uh, this arc length parameter, because of the square root of the sum of these squares things, that often becomes something that's very difficult to find an antiderivative for or even impossible to find an antiderivative for. So what we typically do with these kind of integrals is just the best we can do is approximate them. So we use uh, something like Simpson's rule or the numerical uh, capabilities of a calculator to get a decimal approximation. And that's what I did here. I ran this through a TI Inspire cast, which will give me an exact answer if it's easy enough to do. This one, it didn't, wasn't able to do that. So the best it could do was to run an approximation technique, which is probably the best we're going to be able to do here. And so we get it's about 12.92. So this is a little less than 13, about 12.9. So of course, what that means is if this were a string following along here, if we straightened the string out, and then measured it with the ruler, it would be about 12.9 units long. So that gives you some introduction to parametric curves, or at least a refresher on that. It also shows you how we can use uh, parametric, we can graph parametric curves, we can find points on them and find corresponding t, x, and y points. We can find the length of the curve, we can find the area under the curve, we can find the um, tangent line, slope of the tangent line and the tangent line. So a few things that we can do with calculus in parametric curves.